going to be doing a Q&A video because we get asked a lot of questions by you guys and we thought it would be fun to just condense them all into one video, um, give us a chance to chat to you guys about some of the things you're curious about and I don't think we need any longer of an intro than that. We will jump right in. The first question that we get asked a lot or we've been getting asked a lot over the last few months is whether or not we have a Patreon and we're excited to announce that we now do. We just made it the other day so please if you want to support us go there. We're going to be doing a lot of fun little things for our patrons, exclusive video content. We're going to be doing a Google group hangout with all the people that are in that tier or whatever. Um, we're just getting used to Patreons. If you have any suggestions for rewards we should do or whatever, let us know. But yeah, that's the admin part of this video. Our sex tapes will be leaked to Patreon patrons first, right? If we ever make a sex tape, you can guarantee it's going to Patreon first. So you really want to be clued in on that space. <laughs> Our first question is from Facebook. Do you believe in an ether or any other bigger power bigger than us? I'm an atheist, but it's common sense to me that there are, of course, dimensions and realms of physics that we know nothing about. If you were a 2D object and you encountered a 3D object, you would only be able to interpret the 3D object through the lens of 2D, because that's all you're capable of seeing. So I feel like there's a ton of stuff like that, most likely. If there is a consciousness that is greater than ours, or if we are a part of a collective conscious that's bigger than each individual uh, I mean, part we of that definitely are. Sure, in sure, in a sense of, of yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> in the sense that the viewers who are not being <laughs> and are not in our heads, the Earth is one big organism, the universe is an organism, like it's just yeah. tiny organisms within organisms. In the same way that, you know, a cell of your body is a specific cell, sure. a life of its own that's part of a bigger yeah, yeah. body. Um, but I, again, the uh, the one percent that leans skeptic is really important because if there is something that's out there that's greater than us, then it seems to me that the best way to approach that transcendental other is through skepticism, through uh, empiricism, the scientific method. Because when you just start going out on the limbs with unsubstantiated claims about things that exist beyond our ability to perceive and measure, well, that's when like our common understanding breaks down and you can't like get a footing on anything solid and that's where like religion steps in with misguided ideas. If, if you're selling someone a belief that you can't substantiate, then you can take advantage of people because there's no way for them to prove you false. So we need to be focusing on things that are measurable, empirical. Um, so yeah, like while I'm totally open to there being other things out there, whether that's like alien or universe or we're in a simulation, whatever it is, I think the best way forward simulation. is not believing in it, accepting this as base reality and working from there. How about this? I don't believe in a higher power, but I believe in a greater power. And yes. that's just that, like, <laughs> that the system is bigger than any part of the system. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, like, us as a collective humanity is a greater force than me as an individual. And how far that goes, take it as you will. Next question. If the church were to abandon spirituality and become a social club like Rotary, would you consider going back? No, no, that's pretty much what it already is. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> it's the social side of Mormonism is so good. That's what I miss out on. Well, it's like, know, no, we were there for the eternal life and eternal families, not for the potlucks. Well, you liked all that stuff. Well, yeah, you know, well, there's something about like everywhere you're going, like if you move to a new city, you automatically have a social structure sure. that's built in. That's really nice for a lot of people. Um, social clubs aren't that fun unless there's like a base level of like-mindedness most of the time and I just feel like what yeah. would the church be offering? Like no, the answer's no. Yeah. Not even any like booze. <laughs> get my rice. Tana's got a rice situation he needs to deal with. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Earned it? Yeah, I even did five minutes less than what I normally do. Yeah. Alright, next question. What are your thoughts on polyamory? Um... I was gonna do that. <laughs> Here's the thing is I, I struggle to say I am this way or that way because think about how many times in your life you've changed your ideas on something or changed your preferences on something. So like to say like, I will always be monogamous or I will always be polyamorous. So this is the one true only method. I just don't really believe that. What I believe is that everyone should like explore and find what works for them. So right now I'm enjoying um, uh, experimenting with, is experimenting the right word? Sure. Um, experiencing polyamory. 
I think polyamory is great and I think in a lot of ways it is sort of the, I don't want to say the best system, but it is kind of the method for relationships that I feel is the most free of ego. And I think the most successful relationships are those that are free of ego, which is to say like not being possessive of the other person, not needing them to complete you, um, not being fearful that you're going to lose them, just being completely present in how the relationship is right now and not letting how your relationship is defined dictate how it is right now in the present moment and not letting what's happened in the past dictate the present and I think polyamory kind of encompasses all those things but right now I'm enjoying monogamy yeah. <laughs> but I think I would call myself theoretically polyamorous in that I think it's something I'd definitely be open to. So like if your monogamous partner came up to you and was like hey I feel like I yeah. want to have experiences or relationships outside yeah. of this one you probably wouldn't be like yeah. over, like devastated by that. No. No. So, good stuff. Um, I, I'm really quick. I would say that monogamy does make sense for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and especially I think families with kids, that can be really difficult mm -hmm. to navigate. So like, no judgment of anyone who does no. choose to do that. Next question is, what tips would you give when dealing with your very loving, active family trying to coerce you into going back to church? Especially now that I'm newly separated, I can see the questions coming out soon. And they always thought that it was my husband's influence that made me stop going. They don't seem to understand or want to understand it was actually the church history I have mega issues with. Yes, he might have helped me open my eyes to the fact, to the fact that something was off about various things, but I was the one that did all the research for myself. So any tips would be greatly appreciated. My main tip when dealing with a very loving, active family is number one, to make sure you're being loving too, obviously and just to see your family as people before you see them as Mormons, I guess, like don't conflate their beliefs with their identity. They are first and foremost just fellow human beings and they're just the product of their conditioning. So recognize that and when they're being maybe frustrating, maybe they're belittling, if this happens, belittling your doubts or the reasons why you left, don't let it feel personal even though it does feel very personal just recognize that that's just their conditioning and they're just saying what they think is the right thing to say um, and just keep a cool head because I really struggled keeping a cool head when I talked to people about why I left the church in the beginning and it got me into some sticky situations and not the good kind <laughs> not the good kind Tana what would you say uh, that was good cool yeah just stay calm know that it will all be okay and also recognize that these things can change over time. So if your family has a really extreme reaction at first, just know that that doesn't have to be forever. But the best thing you can do is to keep a cool head. And I will say this, you are under no obligation to be somewhere where you don't feel like emotionally safe. Yeah. And if you can't feel safe with family, then maybe you do need like a little break and it's okay. You don't have to feel guilty for needing space, for needing time to uh, just be on your own, get things, your own life sorted out and um, you don't have to put anyone else's needs or desires above yours, so take care of yourself. Mirror, mirror on the wall, have Tanner and Sam slept together at all? Have you even watched our video? What video? The one where uh, my favorite sins where you were pegging me. <laughs> but no, we haven't. But no. <laughs> have you ever seen a taper in real life and attempted to ride one? I've never seen one in real life, have you? I don't think so. But if I saw one, I would definitely try to ride it. I wouldn't want to engage in no, that kind yeah, of animal absolutely not, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Harass a poor animal in a while. A tiny little horse. <laughs> yeah. Just the tiniest horse. <laughs> Favorite thing about being free from the church? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> not being, Every having my second. identity tied to a set of beliefs that don't make sense. Um, not defining my morality by arbitrary standards set by old men. Just being free to live my life in the present moment and not for some future thing that doesn't even sound that good. A thousand years of church history, family mm. history. <laughs> yeah, mine would be just authenticity. There's really- Authenticity, do things originally. Tana matched with this Mormon singer on Tinder years ago and that's one of her songs. <laughs> Comment down below if you know who we're talking about. <laughs> She's probably watching. She probably watches. <laughs> yeah. Authenticity, there's just really no price on being who you are. There was, as a Mormon, there was so much of myself that I felt shamed about, that I was afraid of, and was constantly just like worried that I would be too much for myself. And I'm like, 
I just love being able to embrace all sides of me and um, I feel and way great. more self love oh, yeah. leaving the church because now it's not, you know, now if you do something wrong, you can be like, okay, I did that thing, and you can like kind of analyze what led you to make a, maybe a shitty decision, and then you can not do it again rather than having to bog yourself down with it. And, and also just finding your worth from within, within rather than some concept in the sky. And it's weird that, you know, where you, like religion uses a sort of like bronze age system of psychology where they blame all your troubles or your good things on some being that you can't actually interface yeah. with. It's very confusing. It's very confusing, but you know, so I used to be like, oh, I'm depressed. Why am I depressed? Is it because God hates me? Am I not doing <laughs> something good enough? I haven't gone to the temple enough. That's probably why I'm Where's depressed. Where's the only option? And I'm like, oh, turns out. <laughs> Didn't get enough sunlight today. Haven't <laughs> yeah. eaten a vegetable in two days. Why does God seem to hate me every winter? I can't figure it out. So I'm not good. doing anything differently. <laughs> Did your belief in the ODS church's truth claims fall apart slowly or did it come crashing down in a short period, parentheses, within 24 hours? <laughs> Was there a moment when that realization hit? How did you react? Tell your friends and families. For me, it happened over the course of a few months. For me, it happened the over the course of uh, like two years. And you know, I feel like there's just been, it's kind of just been building up. Yeah. Even like earlier today, I was thinking about stuff that happened in high school that I was like, ah. I don't think there's like there was a single silver bullet moment for me because I don't think that's really true for many people. Like it is usually just an accumulation of evidence, and then suddenly it's like, whoa! This and then is there's like a straw that breaks the camel's yeah, back. Yeah, I remember the straw that breaks the camel's back being one of my friends who had been a missionary in England had made this Facebook post. He was ex Mormon at this time, and I found out through this Facebook post, I guess. Um, and he said, "Hey Mormons, why is it that you're always bashing on moral relativism?" But you think it was okay for Joseph Smith to marry 14 year old girls. And then when I read that, it was like I'd been researching stuff for months. And I was just, I wrote out this response to defend the church. And then even after I said it, I was like, I don't believe this. Like, this is crap. And then I went on Mormon Think and read all this stuff about Joseph Smith's polygamy. And I was like, this was evil. Women were truly coerced. These girls were young and innocent, blah, blah, blah. And then I was out. My uh, straw that broke my camel's back was watching the documentary Going Clear, Oof, which Samantha recommended to me. And Wait, did I watch it before you? You watched it before me. Mm, that really shook me a ton, but it wasn't like the final straw. Yeah. But I remember afterwards being like, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, during it I was like, um, <laughs> if I were in a cult, <laughs> God, couple questions. would it look just like this? So why does my experience look just like that? And then I was like, I'm in a cult. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> when you know, you know. <laughs> Next question, what is your favorite, most asinine quote from a church leader? I feel like you must have so many good ones. Oh, jeez. A testimony is to be born in the bearing of yeah, it. Yeah. to be found in the bearing of it. Boyd K. Packer said when you talk to the bitter apostate, they spread disease germs. Like, <laughs> he said that ex-Mormons have disease germs. Truth. Which doesn't seem super scientific. <laughs> <laughs> Much like Boyd K. Packer <laughs> himself. Disease germs. Lots like of the plague. Like mm -hmm. the plague. Uh, um, yeah, I, there's, there's so much. It's just a wellspring of everlasting uh, stupidity. And I'm, I, when I actually left the church, I was like, ah, this is what a waste. I have like 26 years of so <laughs> much information about church stuff. Just crap, just so mm. much that I'll never be able to use now. I guess it helps every once in a while on this channel, but I've also forgotten a lot of it, yeah. which is great. That's good. Um, how do you stop feeling the guilt about not being very into the church anymore? <laughs> Easy, it's not <laughs> true and we don't feel any guilt. <laughs> once I'm convinced of something in my head, I, I can make a transition really quick. For some reason, if, if it makes sense, I don't get, I don't hold on to it anymore. Yeah, I didn't grow up Mormon, so I just don't have the same degree of conditioning that a lot of ex Mormons have. So I didn't, I wasn't raised in a shame based culture, and I didn't, like, I chose to join the church. And while once I became a member, there was, you know, that godly guilt when you feel guilty to God for doing things. Like, because I joined the church in England, there wasn't a ton of, like, social shaming and any of the stuff that there kind of is here growing up Mormon. So I feel like, that made it super easy for me to not feel guilt because also I'd lived a life before Mormonism for like 17 years so I just went back to that. There's no reason to feel guilt, it's just leftover conditioning. 
Um, I can imagine, like, I do feel some shame sometimes when I'm, like, with my family and want to drink a coffee or something. And I don't drink very much coffee, TBH. Um, but when I do, I'm at home with my family. <laughs> and I feel like I have to, like, sneak it through. I have to, like, sneak it through. And I'm sure if I just did it, it would be fine. And that's the advice I'm giving to myself right now is, Tanner, next time, don't be sneaky. Because life is too short to ask other people for permission to be yourself. Especially with things as silly as coffee, I think Mormons or ex-Mormons that grew up in the church and just have no concept of how stupidly normal it is mm. to drink coffee, they will still give the Mormon people in their life more power than they deserve by being like sneaky about it or <laughs> or even, I've even heard stories of people who, you know, their family will come visit them and they'll hide the coffee machine, even yeah, though their yeah. family knows that they're out of the church and it's like, don't, like, don't project shame about your life choices because Mormons will pick up on that. It's better to just be unapologetically you because you know why you're drinking coffee because it's good for you, it's yummy and you don't need a fucking reason because it's not bad for you. So don't act as if there's a reason to be ashamed of it. It's so weird. My parents know that I my parents know that I drink, my parents know that but then like I'm afraid to drink coffee in front of them. But Strange. I'm from now on I'm not gonna do that. Sometimes I feel like I need to hide my coke addiction from my parents and it feels like I'm not being able to be my authentic self. But the other day there was some on the end of my nose and I was like, I can't, I'm not gonna hide this anymore, I'm just gonna be me. I think those are all the questions we should do for this Q&A. Okay. So those are all the ones we got on Facebook. Cool. And we can do another Q&A if you guys are interested, leave more questions for us down below. If you want to support us on Patreon, please support us on Patreon, we'll be so grateful. And grateful. as always, tell us what you're into. Um, if you have an idea for a video that you think would be great, this is uh, something we're all doing together, so let us know what's, what's good. We want to start sharing more of the books, podcasts, movies, all kinds of things that we're enjoying um, with you guys in kind of a monthly favorites type video. So um, let us know if you have any suggestions for things we should watch or read or anything like that because we're always looking for suggestions. Thank you. We love you. Bye. Bye. Let's do a thumbnail. All right.